non-fiction media could be seen as an objective form of art as it is based around real events, but that isn't necessarily true. The bias of the people involved and the emotion of the camera's focus can obscure the truth of the events, but under the right circumstances that isn't a flaw of the genre. It can even be one of its greatest strengths which leads me to the topic of experimental non-fiction. Here the orthodox form is shifted and deconstructed to better amplify the core message of the true story the work is based on. These concepts are difficult to visualize without a solid example of these ideas being put into practice which leads me to my main topic. The 2003 documentary directed by Jonathan Coet, Tarnation. I'm on the edge of my seat here and today I will analyze the film in regards to how it fits the experimental non-fiction genre. I will be using footage from the DVD release which has this strange issue where the menu screen is leagues louder than the actual film but enough about that. I'll summarize the film in order to present a basic structure of the events of the autobiography. Coet and his husband David Sanin Pass are living their lives as they normally do until Coet learns that his mother Renée Leblanc suffered from a lithium overdose. He immediately goes to visit her and the film uses this event as a catalyst to go back in time and explore Coet's family history as far back as his grandparents Adolf and Rosemary Davis. Treatment of Rene as they forced her to do shock therapy at age 12 because they didn't believe she was paralyzed. From there it gets worse as multiple horror events distance Rene away from her son. Coet's history continues as he suffers abuse in foster care and is then placed in the care of his grandparents. His memories of his mother are distorted from a young age but a strong love for her remains. He suffers through more incidents like a drug overdose and depersonalization disorder throughout his early childhood, forced to contemplate ideas of self and identity which no child should be forced to suffer through and with his father gone before he was even born. And throughout all this, he is coming to terms with his sexuality while also picking up a fondness for film and video. Most of the footage shown in this documentary is Coet's Super 8 recordings throughout nearly 20 years of his life. This film is immensely personal to Coet. It is how he and his mother experience their lives and Coet really drives the emotion of their traumatic past by adopting aesthetic qualities of underground cinema, harsh soundscapes, vibrant colors, and an editing style which throws you into the deep end with little regard for your comfort. The mix of all the documentation of his life story through photos, commercials of that time period, and his own footage distorted and edited in such jarring manners brings it to life in the most uncomfortable manner when appropriate. The whole film isn't oppressive, but when the topic calls for it, there is nothing held back. It should also be noted that the style of the film was also influenced by its budget of about $220. Tarnation was edited on iMovie, a free and easy to use program, but it also is rather limited when compared to some of its more expensive contemporaries. That can explain some of the creative choices taken and the amount of text used throughout. Though the budget may be $220, distribution was $400,000 because of all the licensed songs used throughout. I have been describing quite a lot of elements presented in Tarnation, but now I want to show a scene which demonstrates a good chunk of the qualities brought up. Here and fair warning, there is a drastic shift in the audio. Be warned. Yeah, it's still good. What all do you want to record on here? Johnson, say Talk something to the tape recorder. Say, say hello. Talk to the tape recorder, Donnie. Record.
She says if I The text here and the presentation overall is in black and white. It's the beginning of this whole story chronologically. It starts off simple, but as the events of the shock therapy gets closer and closer, the presentation leans to a more menacing tone. The statements presented in the text format are more alarming despite the lack of change in the calm music. The huge change comes at the mention of shock therapy, as a red distorted image flashes accompanied by that shock sound. The song now reverberates as a new backing track slowly slides in. The images multiply over and over in this endless loop. The editing becomes faster and faster until she just pops away at the end of the section. This method of presentation distances itself away from the viewer. It starts off inviting, but the rest feels so angry and personal that it is as if we, the audience, are peering into unfiltered thoughts and emotions. The experimental style and tone shift I think really add to this moment. The style was definitely inspired by the underground films Cowette grew up watching. This is a film that is very much in touch with film history, whether that be through references or straight up remixing footage from other films. It goes beyond just the style, it is an integral part of Coet's past, so it has a place in his autobiography. Here's a few sections from the film which indulge in this. You don't see. As long as she ate the mouse, she can't see. Now here, she's like dead now. Sing. She's awake. She sees. You don't see. As long as she ate the mouse, she can't see. Now here, she's like dead now. Sing. I'm sorry to hear you are feeling well. I'm sorry to hear you are feeling well. I'm sorry she don't see. As long as she ate the mouse, she can't see. Now here she's like dead now. Sing. She don't see. As long as she ate the mouse, she can't see. Now here she's like dead now. Sing. It's just a little bit. 
This style of reusing footage from other properties serves to set the time period of Coet's life at that time. It digs into that personal story that he's telling. Seeing these films remixed to fit the style of this film sucks you into the experience even further, though at points I find it a bit too self-indulgent. The Eraserhead reference is a bit much, but the rest of the advert serves the documentary well. Most of what I've shown has been somewhat hard to get into, but the entire film isn't always this experimental. There are times where Tarnation pulls back and just lets a moment play out uninterrupted, and they contrast the more abstract sections well. These moments tend to play up the awkwardness of that moment, or they can just let the subjects breathe in a film that feels trapped in dread and angst. Here are some examples of these moments. As this mark right here, before a person is born, and God shows them everything, shows them heaven and everything. But when they get ready to be born, God doesn't want them to remember any of that. So an angel touches, touches, it touched me and touches everybody before they're born. And everybody has this little mark. He says, that's what it is. It's the angel touches the child before they're born so they won't remember. Exactly. Charlie from the chocolate factory. <laughs> Dad, I'm Charlie from the chocolate factory. <laughs> Will you be 21 soon? Two months. Yeah. Two months. How old are you, David? <laughs> 13. When will you be 14? In December. Is that three months away? I guess. This is September 1993. Yeah, three months. And I'm still smoking. David, you'll be, you'll be 14 in three months. Mm -hmm. David. Angel. Now stand up. Let's see what it looks like. Wow. Wow. Looks like a... a Tarnation is a film that feels like it's mostly dark and oppressive. But Cowett still cares about the people in his film deeply. Despite this, there's no shaking off some of the terrible actions of the past. I've said it before, but this is very personal to Cowett, and the film's perspective is very much through his eyes. When expressing anger at some of the more deplorable acts his family committed before, the people presented can feel scary, almost demonic. It's a situation with levels of gray involved, but the harsh contrast can make it seem more black and white. The viewer feels the deep love Coet holds while also being subjected to his personal anger and hate. The objective truth tends to slip slightly as it gives way to a darkness that no one should have to go through. I find the contrast between these two sides makes for a compelling narrative experience. The experimental side of Tarnation really amplifies these deep-sided emotions to the max in a way that a more conventional style really wouldn't carry as much as rawly as this does. The raw footage of the Super 8, the song choices throughout, the distortions applied all throughout and just Cowett's life story put on blast made for one of the most memorable experimental non-fiction experiences I've had in a while. The documentary has flaws. It can suffer from self-indulgence. Certain sections can lack the pull of others and the style may not be as striking given its influences as far back as the 60s and the projects that came about 18 years after the fact, which could draw inspiration from Tarnation. Despite all this, it is a film which I'm glad I was exposed to. And I'm glad that I was able to finally make a full video on the film I briefly mentioned 
in that video where I played a Japan only PSP game which most people aren't too familiar with. That's all from me. I'll see you all then.